Unless uh, I, I was going to preach on something else tonight, and the Lord directed me back to 2 Chronicles 7 14. Amen. And uh, while you're turning there, I'm going to read a verse in, in Haggai. Chapter 2, verse 19. And, uh, and the thought it brings is the seed yet in the barn? Question. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, you got to get the seed in the soil. Yeah. In the barn, ain't going gonna, ain't gonna to get you any corn. Nope. Or wheat, except what the rats carry out. Ain't that part of the truth? It said, Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate mm -hmm. and the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day will I bless thee. Now, God wants to bless us, there's no doubt in my mind. He wants people, thank you, Greg. He wants people to be saved. If you, as individuals, how many of you have somebody that you believe, you're not, you don't, I know you, I'm not asking you to, so, to pronounce them lost, but you believe by their actions and all, they're not saved. Raise your hand. Amen. Everybody you know saved, Tim? You do know somebody's lost. I did. Right? Okay. <laughs> I didn't see it. Maybe it was behind your mama's head there. <laughs> we don't have no secret disciples here now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, Solomon, I, I would, uh, let me just preempt this a minute. Uh, it must have been awesome for Solomon to observe David as dad. Especially in the way his dad served the Lord. Now David had older children, older than Solomon. But God said Solomon was the one that's going to be anointed king. You know, everybody has an idea who ought to be running things. Mm -hmm. But God has to, he knows what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and who needs to do it. Now, if I wouldn't do it, if you wouldn't do it, God will raise some up, uh, somebody else who will do it. Amen. So, uh, I think a lot of times we get our eyes on other people. And we should have it on Christ. And, uh, our, come on in. Our, I so I we were just praying for you. Well, we they turned the heat on over there and it wouldn't come on. It went on and off, went on and off. So we got a place to where we have church and Bible study too. All right. Amen. Yes, yes. That's what it's, so, it's fell, that's what we call it, the fellowship hall. Uh -huh. That's what we're gonna do. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord, my car got fixed today and I didn't didn't have to pay for it. Praise the Lord. It's been sitting it? for two weeks about Hallelujah. Good to see you. Amen. Pray for, okay. pray for, I'll tell you, pray, remember that? That's something to praise the Lord about. Something Ain't nothing about. better a car that runs right, nothing worse than one dog. Amen. <laughs> Unless you run over spare tires and stuff like that. <laughs> and a piece of plywood and stuff like that. You know? <laughs> Now, if Tim would have been with you, he'd have stopped and tied that plywood on and took it home. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Well, waste not, won't not. Amen. Buy the keepers with me. But Solomon had, uh, and you don't hear much said about this. It's implied, but you don't hear much said about it. Solomon, uh, he knew, and I doubt in my mind, David didn't keep anything from Solomon about what he had done with his mother. And, uh, you know, David, every day of his life, had to live with that, uh, what he had done to Uriah. Now, I personally believe, from my study, 
that if David had went to Uriah and said, Uriah, I'm your king, but I sinned. And you're one of my, you're one of my anointed. You're one of my men, and I sinned with your wife. And, and I forced my attentions upon her, and I, I want you to forgive me, uh, and I want you to, uh, to uh, and I believe you ain't no doubt in my mind that what I, what I feel about Uriah's spirit, that Uriah was saying, yes, King, I forgive you. <laughs> Woo! He said, yes, God, I forgive you. You know what keeps a lot of people from getting forgiveness? Stinking pride. <laughs> They don't want to admit it's them. Yeah. David went through some of that. And by the way, David wouldn't have gotten the trouble he got in if he'd been doing what he should have been doing that day. He's supposed to have been out there leading the, the men. Instead, he was home taking a bath. Amen. Walking on the roof, whatever. And observed Bathsheba bathing when it was time for women to bathe. And Bathsheba was Uriah's wife. He knew she uh, was spoken for. By the way, he had his own wife. Amen. And David, and by the way, I believe this too. David was a great sinner, but I believe he was a great confessor too. Mm -hmm. You can't read Psalm 51, Psalm 32, and not see him. So, and David said, restore. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the hard thing, and I, I, I've had a time or two in my life, Brother Greg, I've lost my joy. Mm -hmm. And I lost my joy because a lot of times things other people did. It wasn't God. He didn't, he didn't pull away from me. By the fact, when I got saved, he took the boat in my life, and he's never left me since. Amen. But boy, what a joy it is when you don't have to work on me near as much. Amen. Amen. They have to work on, and, and, and by the way, the actions of other people can drag you down. Don't let the devil use that to do that in your life, because it will rob you of great joy and great influence on other people. David, uh, and he come out and confess that, you know. He said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my spirit in early grave uh, because of his disobedience. God said that obedience is better than sacrifice. And I believe God meant every word of it. It's better than sacrifice. Where we, we, we go astray. You know, a sheep is one of the dumbest animals God ever made. He calls us his sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I, I've been told, I, I read uh, Philip Keller's books on the sheep and the shepherd, and Ramona and several other books I've got in the library by him. But he studied the sheep. He said, you can take a sheep that was raised in the backyard of the barn, take him around the front yard, you can't find himself way back to the backyard. <laughs> Now, they can they can be living beside a river that flows uh, just steady and uh, die of thirst because they won't drink unless they can see their reflection in the water. And uh, what was the shepherd's job? He would he would uh, dig a little trench down the river, let that water run in and settle. And then when the sheep saw the water, they drank. <coughs> Once in a while, you'd get a rebellious sheep, and I wish we could do this today. You'd just grab him, break his leg, to mend it up, put some ointment on it, and carry him around a while, amen? Uh, you ever seen some people look good with broke legs and arms? You know? <laughs> but that's the way he did it. And, that, and then when that leg got better, that sheep didn't stray anymore. And I've never read anywhere where a sheep uh, had, to, had to have his leg broke a second time. I've uh, many mean, the first time. If we can only learn to listen. Now David was a great repenter, and David was a great leader, and God spared his life many times. His father-in-law tried to kill him many times with a javelin saw. He had to flee for his life, and uh, it, one time he slipped up on Saul in a cave and cut part of his cape off, and it grieved him that he'd done that because he touched God's anointing. Amen. And, uh, and he could have took his life and uh, that's what uh, they warned him to do, but he wouldn't do that because he reverenced and respected what God, God had put Saul in as a head taller than any man in there, and he, he could have done great things, but he let his pride get him instead of uh, letting God lead him, amen. I'd rather be led of God uh, and God get all the glory than me know, uh, that, that know about anything. 
I was looking in, in that funeral we were at today, or that, uh, that service to this afternoon, uh, and, and I was amazed at the people there that I felt in my soul were unsaved. And I, and I thought to myself, Lord, I'd like to have every one of them. <laughs> I don't care how rough they are, where they come from, they're a soul. They need to be saved, amen. And the shepherd gets a burden. That's why it tells us in Scripture the shepherd would leave the ninety and nine and go after that one, one sheep. Amen. Amen. And they're all important. Mm -hmm. I never saw. I, I heard preachers make the statement. Well, they look better going than they come. I ain't never looked at God like yet. Amen. The shepherd cares whether the sheep hurt or not. The shepherd cares. Mm -hmm. When I stand up on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night or wherever I, I, I'm preaching or testifying or witnessing, I, I, the lookout, and there's people that I, that I, in my heart, I know ought to be over there. But they're not there. Now they make a choice. God won't make you do anything. He'll make you regret you didn't. Do you think David, all those years after he confessed, your eye was dead, he couldn't bring you back. All he could ask was God's forgiveness and confession. Boy, Nathan, the, the preacher had a hard job that day when he told David, you're the man. You're the man. David could have had Nathan killed, but he had respect for God's man. Had he only been doing what he should have been doing. You know, we get in trouble sometimes because we're not doing what we should be doing. And we're not careful. We'll look at other people and we'll blame them. And you can't do that. Every man and woman's got to stand and rise on their own sin. I don't want to be a stumbling block, and you can be that. I don't want to cause anybody to stumble over my testimony, stumble over uh, what I've preached. I, I don't want to preach something I don't live or live uh, with something in some way that I, I don't uh, uh, that I don't live up to the scripture of. Now, I, I've lived with this woman 49 years, and I know I've been a handful. And I thank God that she's forgiven me many times. This, you know, y'all never argued any, did you? We don't, we don't argue anymore. We just disagree rather loudly. Amen. <laughs> but David, Solomon had saw all these things, in, and, and he was carrying. Now, it was a time of peace. They weren't fighting like they were in David's time. Every God gave Solomon peace. Uh, during his reign to build the temple, the house of God, uh, and other things that he done, amen, and became one of the well. People just brought stuff, amen, and, uh, and gave him gold and silver and all because he, God had given him a wisdom. They'd come and ask him questions, and, and he'd give them the answers. He, uh, and he'd tell them, uh, you know, these come from God, they come from me, amen. But... Uh, uh, he had watched his, his dad. There's no doubt about it. He he loved his dad, loved his mom, Bathsheba. She lived, outlived David and uh, lived under the reign of Solomon and uh, and died under the reign of Solomon, by the way. And uh, uh, David uh, did leave a lot of good behind, but, but he's always been remembered uh, for uh, that, that action with Bathsheba. Now, I know God forgive him. And I'm glad God's in that kind of, uh, he's in, still in the forgiving business. We may fall down and we may falter, but there's a God that can forgive. Amen. You can't get so far down that he can't reach down and get a hold of him. Amen. Amen. And the shepherd's supposed to do that too. There's a lot of shepherds that they're not lift, trying to lift up their people. My burden's always been our people. I love my people. And, uh, uh, but Solomon had saw all this, and he had been praying as they dedicated the, uh, if you read the chapter six, five, six, and seven, uh, and, uh, uh, and verse 10 of chapter seven says, on the third and 20th day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents. And they were glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Lord had shewed unto David and to Solomon uh, to, and to Israel's his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house he prosperously effected. 
And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. Boy, it's good when you pray and know God heard it. But boy, it's better when you, know, you pray and you know God heard it and he showed up. Amen. And he appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, God, this is God talking to Solomon now after Solomon talked to God. By the way, prayer ought to be a two-way street. You talk to God, then God talk to you. Amen. Sometimes I need to shut up and listen. Amen. Amen. I told one brother one time, I said, you'll be talking 30 minutes after you gone to heaven. Amen. Amen. But uh, God said, I have heard thy prayer. Notice that's P-R-A-Y-E-R. -E Not only a prayer, but thy prayer. What Solomon just got done praying. And I like it when God puts a hand in there, but we should never put a hand before we are. And have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. <coughs> no doubt Solomon knew the history of Israel. I'm sure Nathan and other uh, preachers and prophets of that day had shared that. And God went back and said in verse 13, If I shut up heaven, and by the way, the only one who shut up heaven is God. The devil can't. That there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Now, do you think Solomon didn't know the story about the frogs and the locusts and the lice and uh, and all the things those ten plagues of nation of Egypt had went through, and God had spared uh, the land of Goshen where they were. I can't believe a, 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 a monarch like uh, the Pharaoh would say, "Just give me one more night with the frogs." I, amen. The only thing I won't see more after one more night's frog legs. <laughs> And I, he remembered that. And God's bringing this. Uh, by the way, there's a lot of things that you've got stored in your mind. And, he, and sometimes the Word of God will prick that and bring it forward and give you something to remind you of. Amen. And now God tells Solomon this. And, and, and he says, I have heard thy prayer. I like that. And have chosen this place. I like that. No place like this place. This must be the place. Amen. He's chosen it to himself for a house of sacrifice. Verse 14, and I hope you have that verse underlined in your Bible. If my people, now God knows who, by the way, God created all people to be his people. Did you know that? Did y'all know that? Say amen. 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 Sure did. You said all the lost, yeah, God, God didn't intend for any of them to be lost. He wanted them all to be saved. When Christ died once and for all. All could be saved. Why wouldn't a man or a woman or a young man or a young woman want to be saved? They can be saved. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. What's the next part of that verse? And turn away from their wicked ways. We got some wicked ways. <laughs> sure we do. He loves us anyway. But for him to bless us We've got to turn from those wicked ways. Humble themselves. That's to bring that pride back down, you know, and acknowledge. Yeah, I'm the one wrong, God. It's not you. God, I know you love me. Your son died for me. 
I, I, by the way, don't ever look at people, well, he's going to hell, she's going to heaven. No, don't ever do that. All of them have a soul. Amen. And they all have to make a choice, heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we're living in front of them, are they seeing something worth going to heaven for? Amen. Are we, are we a living example? Does that word of life come flowing out of us like it should? Amen. Uh, are we, I mean, you know, they're, they're dealing, they're, they're coming, I've been studying some, or reading some behind what's called nanoelectricity. There'll be no more telephone, if they, if they get it progressed, going on in Silicon Valley right now. They've got two or three companies really interested in it, and you won't ever, uh, it, it'll supply nanoelectricity to everything you've got without telephone poles or wires. He said, wow, wow. God's got far more than that. Amen. <laughs> he hung his son on the cross to die everyone for a, a, to appease of what he demanded and Christ fulfilled everything the Father gave him to do and there's nothing impossible with God. Luke 1, 37. God said, it's my people. So he acknowledges that we're his. Do we acknowledge he's ours? Are we ashamed to bless our food when we sit out in public, sit down and bless our food? Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. I've actually had people come up to us uh, after I prayed and said, thank you for praying. Maybe you ought to do that. Amen. <laughs> And you never know who's looking at you. Be living and be giving like you want to please him. Amen. If my people, pretty good, rubbing elbows, pretty good people right here. God and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, which are called by my name. I don't want to do anything to defame God's character by not living up to his name he's given me. He said, well, everybody else is doing it. Well, pooey. Everybody jumped off the Empire State Building. My mama used to tell me, you're going to jump off. Not without a parachute. Amen. <laughs> I, like, I like the way the Lord laid this out. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, I just humble them. Pray and seek my face. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You know what's wrong with uh, Washington, D.C.? It isn't our president. You know what's wrong with what? It's sin. You know what's wrong with Raleigh, North Carolina? It's not our governor. It's sin. If you'll look back and do any kind of studying at all, I feel Brother Greg's probably look back. You look back to when they took, when Marilyn O'Hara somehow blindsided us and took the Word of God out of the schools. You look at the Columbines that we've had and the Florida, the Florida schools that we've had. Not one time up to that time had that ever happened before. And they say God's not. Well, what do we need God? And we've had presidents say, well, I don't need God. Well, I do, and our nation does. I'll tell you what's been right about America, if anything. there has been the few people who kept praying and kept believing this verse right here. What God can do. God's not not slack concerning His promise. And what does that mean? He, he's going to give you more than you ever asked for. Amen. He's going to give you things you don't even realize. He's going to save you things too. By the way, Amen. Amen. You know, I I went. I was. Uh, let me see. First surgery was in uh, fifteen. I guess I was uh, 
67, I had my first surgery. Right? 60, no, 50, uh, 60, 66. Anyway, I could have had, I could have, you know, and I, I looked at, at, at this lady that passed away. She was only 50 years old. While I was in here, already living past, well, God promised us with the way you live, three score and ten. We make the right choices, but we can add some more to that. Amen. Wouldn't that be? I think about my mom and my dad and, and my grandparents, and I think about Roger and Virginia, and uh, I mean, just people that live right. God said it could be anybody's. God said, I will. He's telling Solomon, you pray, I'll answer, and we'll go on down the road together. Amen. <laughs> Woo! You pray, and I'll answer. Well, while I was from Dennis to Menace prayers. Remember Dennis to Menace? Yep. <laughs> He got tired of praying every night, so he wrote his prayer down there over the wall and said, there it is, God. <laughs> God wants to hear from you. He knows all. By the way, you cannot tell God anything new. He knows everything there is to know about you and even more than you know about yourself. He also knows what your capabilities and what you could do if you would. The problem is that we... We have is that we we've got we've got the fields are white, but the laborers are few. God calls you to be a witness and to labor and to pray. And God said, if you'll pray, I'll answer. If you'll pray, I'll do more. D.O. Moody, the one July the fourth, D.O. Moody was not a well educated man as when he got saved. But he got saved and wanted to do something for God. He just, he just got in that book and got to reading that book and believing that book. And God sent him a man called R.A. Torrey. And R.A. Torrey was the educator. And one fourth of, one third of July, he told, called Torrey in and said, rent me the, the biggest place you can rent uh, for tomorrow, July 4th. And we're going to have a meeting. Tory said, that ain't no, I can't prepare none of that. Everybody's on vacation. They got plans for tomorrow and the fourth. He said, rent the building. God will take care of the rest. Tory said in his memoirs, he said, I rented the biggest theater I could find in town. He said, I didn't even get there on time myself. He said, I thought there ain't going to be nobody there. There ain't going to be nobody there. Moody and a few others, maybe. He said he got there and couldn't even get in the front door. He had to go around the alley and crawl in the basement window and get into the uh, to where the service is going on. If God says it, honey, I'm going to tell you, uh, it, it, it's safer than people's bank. I promise you that. Amen. Yeah. If God says it, and right here, we've got a lot of uh, what God says, we got to read it. I never saw any place that he unscrewed the top of my head and poured it in. He said, study to show thyself. And I believe that, you saw that applies to prayer. No, that applies to every person's child of God. The moment he saves you, start applying the word of God. If you don't develop a love for the word of God, there's something wrong with what you've got. I, I, I mean, I, I, I got under conviction reading the word of God. I've heard great men preach and and uh, I mean, Dr. Alder will be green to those, but I didn't get saved that 26th day of June, 1974, 2 30 on Wednesday afternoon. I got to the end that morning, I got to the end of me, but I never got to the end of God. <laughs> and boy, I'll tell you, uh, one that, I mean, it was a glorious thing just to be saved. And to know he called somebody like me to preach. I, I ain't never got home to that. Amen. Maybe mistakes? No, your business sure have. But God's never made any. It's so, so, I'm, I'm sure ashamed of the things I could have done. 
but he's gave me time to do some more. I can't go back. I, I, we can't spend our time spinning our wheels on what we should have done or could have done. We need to be busy about today. Tomorrow's coming. Can't do a thing about it. Yesterday's gone. There'll never be another Tuesday like yesterday. But we're here Wednesday. We, there's something we can do today. <clears throat> I heard Arlene saying today at the funeral how Tommy loved the church. And uh, she said, I just depended on him so much. I told her, I kept telling her, I said, Tommy, quit doing this stuff. He's doing her hair, doing her nails. And I said, you're making me look bad, Tommy. I asked Miss Jean, he really got me under conviction. I asked Miss Jean to let me help Dyer. And she said, absolutely not, amen. <laughs> Ain't no way, amen. She won't let me paint her nails. I was going to use a spray gun. Get her done. <laughs> Get her done, man. God's so good. I wish I'd never failed him in any way. My biggest problem is. I looked at other people. But God left me some great men that are already gone. Dr. Bill Canoy, what a man of God. Don Noble, Harold Steele, Don's Ralph Stevens. Oh, I learned so much about prayer. Dr. Ralph Stevens. He'd get on me and uh, he said, he'd tell me and Gene Bose, get your jaws up out of the cracks of the sidewalk. Get over to Philippians chapter 2, 3, and 4. <laughs> but I knew when he told me, he said, I'm praying for you every day. Somewhere between 4 and 5 in the morning. Dr. Ralph Stevens. Then he took his prayers up high in person. I believe he's still praying. He loved this church. And he loved you people. He said, I was the only preacher today to preach. Well, you know, he only had 91 heart attacks. But I let him preach. I want to tell you, he was. You don't know the act like you ought to be with him after you go to church and come home mm -hmm. a couple, three hours and you sit at the kitchen table. Thank you going to rub down, but you're going to hear some more about the Word of God. Amen. 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 And just sit there and soak it in. We did that many times in his house. I saw God in Ralph Stevens. I saw God in the Okanagan. Another man that touched this church and me was Dr. B.B. Nix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I saw God in that school teacher. Oh. I see God in Albert Hart. Still alive and preaching. There's still some men. Not everybody threw in the towel. The devil like you to believe that. But they hadn't. This ain't time to quit. It's time to get back to Solomon already heard the history about how bad things used to be. So now what we're going to do about today, let's make things better. Okay, can I tell you tonight the way we're going to make things better? The way you're going to make things better in your life is to take these verses I read tonight and let God apply them to your heart. First of all, I'd like to say this. Make sure that the devil had not slipped your counterfeit. You can't be saved and not know it. But you can be saved and be deceived. Don't let Satan deceive you. God, by the way, he wants you to be saved. I, I guess I was crazy. I got saved that Wednesday afternoon, went to church that night. 
There was something in here. I said, Wednesday night you need to be in church. I said, I just got saved today. He said, you go make it public tonight. Amen. Brother Edmondson was teaching the book of the Bible like he did on Wednesday night, verse by verse. And I don't know, he may have known my name, I'm not sure. And he got done and dismissed us, and I raised my hand and said, Preacher, can I say something? Now I've had this happen to me a few times in my ministry. And I, I don't know you, and I don't know if I want you to say anything or not. <laughs> now if I got to know you, I may not be a different, different story. But, but he said, I, uh, okay. I walked down the aisle, and I said, Pastor, I want to tell you, I got saved Wednesday night. And I didn't tell him that two weeks prior that he had preached on hell and made it so real to me I could feel the heat and smell of smoke. I feared to lay down and go to sleep. That's how deep conviction was on me, people. I believe without any conviction there's no conversion. You can disagree with me. But I got under deep conviction. You got under deep conviction. Mm -hmm. Pastor Wilbur had heard the Lord about 2.30 when we were losing our fourth child. We got one in heaven named Wayne. I'll, I'll get to see again. I'll get to see. And I surrendered to preach that same night she got saved. Or that morning, it was morning. My pastor came out at 2 o'clock in the morning to be with my wife. He knew God had been dealing with me about preaching. When he came out of the room and told me she got saved, I said, Pastor, I need to tell you, I surrendered to preach tonight. He said, I've been waiting on you to tell me that. You know what he did? He said, you're preaching Sunday night. Wasn't fair. He said, I wasn't going to give you a chance to back out. <laughs> no, actually, he let me preach on Sunday morning, didn't he? I preached everything from Genesis to Revelation. I got into the concordance part. Preached a little that way. Amen. You got done in seven minutes. <laughs> and it's never happened since. <laughs> One of the fellows come to, come to hear me after I started pastoring here. I think I preached about 40 minutes that day, 35, 40 minutes. And he said, well, I like the first message you preach better. <laughs> but he was just kidding with me. Sermon heads. Well, if my... God's power, ladies and gentlemen, has not diminished at all. God has not lost anything. He's the same God that did for Solomon what he did. David wasn't, I mean, David got wealthy because he served God. Solomon inherited part of that. Then after David died, he had to, he had to pin as the king and, and fight off a uh, hostile takeover by his brothers. Some big brothers. But God, God heard Solomon's prayer and acknowledged it personally and made him some promises. The same promises apply to us today. There's not a thing God can't do. There's not a person, that person that you raised your hand tonight said, I believe there, this person, him or her, is lost. Not too fucking hard for God. I think about Brother Ed Ballou. He probably preached more revivals here outside of Gil Massengill than anybody we've used over the years. What a blessing. Brother Sammy Allen has a having a battle with Parkinson's right now, really bad. Just got out of the hospital, still preaching. Preached here several times. 
Amen. God's going to have somebody to tell the story. I love that old song. I love to tell the story. I love, I, I heard Brother Blue sing one night, he reached farther down than I could reach up. That's such a job to do. Our servicemen and women, our government, our, our those elected positions, they need God so bad. Our nation, but it's got to start with us. The burden will grow if you let it start within you. You can have a little fire, you can have a big fire. It's up to you. God said it's my people. But you're called on my name. Boy, I'm so glad I'm a child of God. <coughs> Let's bow our heads in just a moment. Lord, I'm glad you reminded me again of that afternoon I got saved and the day you saved my wife and the day I surrendered for each one. Those were truly some unforgettable days in our lives. We've had some difficult times when our loved ones had passed on and Thomas and Mom and Paul and Isla just a little over two years ago so many others today. But Lord, there's uh, going to be a day that we stand before you. There'll be nobody there. And in my, I, nobody will say, I'm sorry, my child of God. All these years, Lord, that I've sat beside the beds of dying children of God, I've never heard one ever say, I'm sorry, my child of God. Lord, if we could just get in on the joy of prayer and to see what you would be glad to do through us and around us and in us. Lord, only you know the hearts of the people sitting in this fellowship hall tonight. And Lord, I'm the first to put me on the altar tonight, the altar of sacrifice. Lord, if there's any pride or anything in, in my life that's hindered the work here at Grace Baptist Church or my own testimony, Lord, I ask you to forgive me tonight. If I've held all against any man or have proud, prideful thoughts about you or the work, Lord, I know I'm the least of the least of the least of all that you've saved and I, I'm very grateful tonight Lord I don't want to ever lose that tenderness about being grateful for what you did for me old boy off the mill hill or been in hell didn't even deserve to be born again I'm glad you saved a wretch like me Lord, I want to apologize tonight if I've let anybody down here or let you down in any way at all. Lord, I want to thank you tonight that you didn't give up on me or any of these here. And God, I pray tonight as we bind ourselves under the blood and ask your help, Lord, that we might see our church restored and the finances increase and the needs met, souls to be saved. God, you know what's needed. You know those that need a, a job. And God, you know those that are not able to work. I pray you supply their needs, God, and meet their needs. Lord, uh, I want to thank you for the way you gave your son. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for dying for someone like me. Thank you tonight for Grace Baptist Church, God. She's she stood she stood true blue, Lord. She stood for that word, she stood for the truth. This Bible college, Lord, I want to see it go on, be used for your glory. 
But Lord, I can't do it without you. And I can't do it without the prayers of these here tonight. Lord, I surrender to be whatever you'd have me to be and to do whatever you'd have me to do. To preach whatever you'd have me to preach and even to sing whatever you'd have me to sing. But Lord, would you, would you open the windows of heaven again? You know the needs of these people here tonight, Lord. They're good people. God, I love them. I pray for this call tonight and Arlene and her son I'm not sure is saved and her stepchildren and pray for her son James who made a profession of faith here Lord 20, 25, 30 years ago Lord I pray tonight Lord that we the church side, God, thank you for that out there. It might be a testimony, Lord. Thank you for the people that put it up, and God bless them for doing it. Thank you for every Sunday school classroom, Lord, and we ask you to help us to fill it for your glory and honor. God, we pray for the auditorium, the choir, the auditorium that can be filled for your glory and honor. Give us the instrument players we need, Lord, and give us the leadership, and God, you lead and direct me in everything I do. Don't let me make, keep me God in check. Help me keep my eyes on you. Help me never forget those that's fallen to try to pick them up and to love them. Lord, let them see the love of God here at Grace Baptist Church. Lord, it's here. It's here. And God help us reach out to others. Help us support more missions, God, home and abroad. Help us, God, there's a man sitting out here that needs to run for the glory of God. Yes. Pray you'd send the finances in, the insure it, tag it, and get it on the road to use for your glory. God, we've been through a rough patch. Lord, with the surgeries and the things that I've gone through in the last two years, and I've not been the under shepherd I need to be, Lord. Physically, I need your touch, your guidance, your direction, and I ask for it tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the patience of these people that have waited on me and prayed for me. And help us not to give up on each other. Lord, help us live in our lives. That whole chapter 6 and 7, 2 Chronicles 7, to especially verse 14. Thank you, Lord, for all the prayers you've answered. Thank you for all the prayers you're going to answer. Thank you for all the souls you're going to save. Thank you for all the souls that will be brought back to where they ought to be, Lord. And God, we're praying for them tonight. And I'm determined, Lord, to serve you. I'm determined to lift them up. And we, we pray for these tonight, every request spoken and unspoken, God. And we pray for them. Especially, uh, Audra's granddaughter and Matthew and Neil and Michael and their families, Lord, they stay upon my heart. I thank you, Lord, for what you've done for Thomas, God, the good report that they gave him. God, thank you, Lord. Thank you for everyone here tonight, Lord. God, I pray that you would give us soul winners witnesses for Christ and we might give you the glory and the honor Lord I want you to get all the honor and glory thank you in Jesus name I pray Amen, Amen.